Hello and welcome to the Independence Livestream uh, discussion with me, John Rental, uh, and my colleague, Andrew Grice. We've just been watching uh, Prime Minister's questions uh, and I thought that was a fascinating, evenly matched exchange between uh, Keir Starmer, who has now come out in favour of a two to three week circuit break lockdown, uh, and Boris Johnson, who uh, is trying to keep the country open uh, and seemed uh, unusually confident of his position. What did you think, Andy? Yes, I agree with you, John. Um, it was, I think, Boris Johnson's strongest performance at PMQs for, for some time. Uh, it was also a, a much noisier House of Commons, I thought. Uh, the numbers are still restricted by social distancing, but it was almost as though the Tory whips had ensured the, uh, the loud squad were cheering Boris on today, which was uh, in marked contrast to the rather sort of courtroom-like atmosphere, which has suited yeah, Keir Starmer's natural skills in, in recent weeks and months. So it was almost like a return to the, the good old days of traditional PMQs, even though the benches were you know, thinly occupied. Uh, I thought Boris gave as good as he got today, which I would not have said in, in recent weeks. Given the build up to it, I suppose the only advantage of Keir Starmer coming out of the traps yesterday and calling at his 5 p.m. press conference for the government to adopt uh, the SAGE scientific advisor's advice on a, a limited two week circuit breaker lockdown nationally was that it gave Boris Johnson plenty of time to mug up and prepare for PMQs. Uh, he is sometimes accused by MPs on his own side of not prepping enough for these weekly jousts with the Labour leader. He certainly will have, he knew he had to prep for today. Therefore, I think his answers were much clearer uh, than they usually are. That's right. I thought he was very much better rehearsed than usual, crisper, clearer. But I think the, the most important thing was what you referred to about the, 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 the noise of support from the Tory benches for him. Now, I think that is probably because Keir Starmer shifted his position uh, and made the Labour Party the party of more restrictions, more lockdown, uh, which means that all those libertarians on the Tory backbenches who were opposed to uh, restrictions and have been criticising Boris Johnson for, for going too far, for overreacting, uh, they're now supporting him because he's their defence against an opposition which is now pushing for a national lockdown. That's right, although it's true to say that those MPs, 42 of them voted against the government last night on its, in a symbolic vote on the 10pm curfew for pubs and restaurants. They think that what Boris has done so far already goes too far. So it's a kind of marriage of convenience, if you like, that they will support him on that in not wanting to go further. Boris Johnson's problem is that he knows he may well have to go further in a couple of weeks. And uh, it was uh, noticeable that he, he specifically did not rule out the circuit breaker right idea when he was asked repeatedly by Keir Starmer to explain why he had rejected uh, the scientist's advice on it three weeks ago. Uh, he said he wasn't going to rule out uh, any options. Uh, I rule yeah. nothing out. I rule out nothing, he said. That's and, right. Uh, that's quite significant. And I think for that reason, it's a very clever tactical ploy by Keir Starmer. Of course, he denies the charge of opportunism and playing politics that Boris Johnson inevitably threw at him. He says he's genuinely been converted to the idea of a circuit breaker lockdown. Uh, and I think it's a win-win for him because either Boris in a couple of weeks time comes around to that view and he may well have to do that. Um, Keir Starmer challenged him over speculation in the newspapers today that eight, there was an 80% chance of that actually happening or the number of uh, infections rise, rises and then he's criticised for not, not doing enough to, to combat that. So I, I think it was a, a cleverly chosen moment for Keir Starmer to end the consensus on the restrictions and the handling of the pandemic because he had the cover given to him by the SAGE advisors. That's right, yes. I mean, those, those minutes from the 21st of September that were, were released uh, this week have, have given him the chance. Plus, of course, public opinion is very much behind uh, further restrictions. Public opinion generally, I mean, it's not overwhelming, but I mean, I'd say a majority, I think there was a majority in that YouGov poll yesterday suggesting that the government hasn't gone far enough. Uh, and that gives Keir Starmer quite a lot of political space. 
Yes, 58% uh, said they supported the idea of a September lockdown, a time-limited one, and I think 24% opposed it in that YouGov poll yesterday. Um, clearly, Boris has, does have a case for the defence, which is which he used in PMQs today, which is to say that there's no point in doing a, a lockdown in the areas where incidence of the virus is low. And I suspect if you took an opinion poll in the areas where there were only a low number of infections, then the public would not want to see their businesses disrupted uh, and be locked down. So it's going to be a mixed picture across the country. Uh, the problem is uh, the weakness in, in Boris's strategy uh, the regional and local lockdowns uh, is that it's not at the moment working in, in terms of stopping the spread of the virus. And so he may end up with his balanced approach, as he calls it, or middle way between the two extremes favouring a lockdown and easing of the restrictions, what those, what those Tory MPs want. The danger is that the balanced approach actually achieves neither objective of saving lives or, or livelihoods. Yes, I mean, that precisely the dilemma that I thought Boris Johnson was going to be struggling against today and yet he seemed to be remarkably confident and I think that's because there is there is now a clear sort of difference of opinion and and I think I mean you got the sense very much that the Prime Minister uh, believes in what he's doing I mean he obviously accepts that he might have to go further but he made the case I thought very forcefully for having for keeping schools open I mean that that was a bit of a bit of a device because Labour's not arguing to close them except possibly for a for a week in uh, uh, extra over half term uh, but for keeping businesses uh, and therefore jobs uh, going as well and I thought I thought the Prime Minister felt on very solid ground there and it was I, I, I that was unexpected. Yes and he has been criticised by uh, MPs across the House and a lot of commentators for not giving strong leadership not clear not having a clear message and I think today's uh, coming out fighting today in the way he did was a recognition that perhaps he hasn't been firing on all cylinders. And of course, if you go down the middle of the road or sit on the fence, as he's accused of doing, it's very difficult to have a clear message. But he did manage to do that today. And I suspect his, his holding line for the next couple of weeks will be to say, give the new three tiered system of restrictions at takes effect today a chance to work we're going to hear that a lot from ministers i think over the over the coming days but the problem is you know we'll know in two weeks whether or not that's working and um, he yes. may then have to go back to the, to the very proposal that keir starmer is now pushing so strongly exactly and keir starmer will then be in a very comfortable position of saying i told you so uh, and saying that the government has acted too slowly again which has been his consistent uh, theme throughout. I mean, you're absolutely right. T to watch those two exchanging you know, accusations of opportunism was quite uh, entertaining. Uh, I'm surprised that Boris Johnson uh, managed to, to get away with it at all, because I mean, his his record of opportunism in the past is so great, as Keir Starmer pointed out. But you're absolutely right that Keir Starmer, I thought, protested a bit too much, that he he was genuinely convinced he had to say he was genuinely convinced, not that he was just convinced by the by the evidence that uh, a circuit breaker is needed. Uh, and that made him look as if he was protesting too much, that he's not just adopting uh, a politically convenient position. That's true. Yes, I think that did show uh, the, the, down, the potential downside for Keir Starmer is that the public think he's an opportunist. Although he, too, has had some criticism that's bubbled up in focus groups and opinion polls that he, too, has been sitting on the fence. So I think he was under pressure from some of his own uh, MPs on the Labour side to, to have a more clear strategy and to sort of dial down the constructive bit of his constructive opposition. And he chose the moment well. And I, I also think it was a bit rich of Boris Johnson to accuse Keir Starmer of a dramatic U-turn, as he did uh, today, when the government's carried about, out about 15 <laughs> turns of coronavirus uh, since the pandemic began. I've lost count of them. I think we're up to about 15 now. Absolutely. Um, I mean, Boris Johnson also dealt quite uh, deftly with uh, the SNP uh, leader in Westminster, Ian Blackford, who's presumably uh, very much buoyed by the uh, opinion poll, which was published, I think, during PMQ, suggesting 58% support for independence in uh, in Scotland, the new Ipsos Mori poll. Uh, but Boris Johnson used it as, as an excuse for pointing out that the Scottish uh, SNP government has adopted a similar tiered approach uh, to controlling the coronavirus and congratulated Ian Blackford on that. 
That's right. Yes, Ian Blackford said uh, there would be a tsunami of unemployment if the furlough scheme uh, ends this month, as it's going to do. Um, it was interesting that Boris Johnson used the figures that Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, used at their joint press conference on Monday, that uh, people who in the tier three, the highest levels of the coronavirus, where uh, pubs and restaurants are, are closed, uh, pubs are closed, uh, will get two thirds of the salaries for their workers. Uh, that is not as generous as the 80% people got into the first national lockdown, as you know. Uh, Johnson used the 93% figure. People will get 93% of their salary when universal credit is taken into account. Uh, the problem with that uh, statistic is that it then begs the question, and a couple of MPs asked it just now, uh, what happens in April when the £20 a week boost uh, to, to universal credit runs out? Uh, Boris Johnson, I think, gave a slight hint that he, he may have to extend it, where he, he said it would run until April at least. At least, absolutely. Which uh, was a, I think shows that this, is issue, this issue is under live uh, consideration in Whitehall. I can imagine the Treasury does not want to make a, a long-term commitment to something that could cost, I think, £6 billion a year, uh, but clearly, if we're still uh, in um, lockdown territory come April and restrictions still apply, it's going to be very difficult to uh, impose a cut in income of £20 a week to, to the poorest people in the country. Absolutely. Could well be another U-turn uh, coming. Although that's, I mean, I don't know if you define that as a U-turn or just carrying on with the existing extremely expensive policy. I'm sure Labour would manage to call it a U-turn, and, um, and uh, uh, but uh, I think we, we all slightly uh, abuse that uh, label and use it too often. Um, and um, uh, Labour ac accused Rishi Sunak of doing a U-turn when he brought in a, a very different scheme to the furlough scheme, which wasn't well, really. Uh, but then right. he did do a U-turn because he then brought back a form of furlough in the in the tier three areas. So uh, that was a premature accusation on Labour's behalf on that occasion. What do you make of the uh, the fifty eight percent support for independence in in Scotland? How do you think how do you think Boris Johnson is going to respond to that? Yes, well, I bet you Ian Blackford had wished he'd seen that poll pop up on Twitter before he asked his question about the, about the unemployment crisis. So I'm sure he would have asked about that. And his second question, he gets the luxury of two questions as the third biggest party at Westminster. Um, Boris Johnson will reply by saying, "We had a referendum in 2014. That was supposed to be a once in a generation event." But um, the problem is that support for independence is building ahead of the crucial elections to the Scottish Parliament next May, where Nicola Sturgeon may well be able to claim a mandate for a second referendum if she get, gets a big majority. And the way things are going, and that poll is the latest example of it, things are going her way. Uh, despite the problems with the virus in Scotland, despite the problems they've had in care homes, just like England, Nicola Sturgeon can't seem to do any wrong in the eyes of Scottish voters. And that is a huge headache for Boris Johnson. Yeah, I mean, because all he can do is just continue to insist that it's a matter for the Westminster government uh, and that he, he's not going to uh, agree to a, a second referendum, uh, which in turn is going to presumably increase uh, support for it in Scotland. That's right. It looks obstructive. It looks anti-Scotland. All the um, North-South debate we've had uh, within England, I'm sure, will resonate in Scotland. Uh, that a lot of MPs, on, uh, on both Tory and Labour, think that there's a dangerous narrative for Boris Johnson in, in these restrictions being imposed in the North, where, of course, the infection rates are highest and parts of the Midlands, that has echoes of the 1980s and Margaret Thatcher. Remember yeah. that a lot, a lot of uh, people uh, in the North voted Conservative last December for the first time in their lives, and they were probably people who, back in the 1980s, was when unemployment was at th over three million, thought they'd never vote Tory in their lives. Now Boris Johnson has a really difficult position, uh, a really difficult to struggle to keep hold of those voters now, particularly when there is this dispute between North and South, and the, the map of restrictions as it currently stands today looks very different in those uh, two parts of the country. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, the way coronavirus has worked to strengthen local and national identities um, in Scotland and the North and in Wales, actually, Mark Drakeford is now, you know, a politician that uh, has been heard of uh, outside outside Wales. Um, it is having a remarkable effect on, on British politics and nobody knows where that's going to lead.
that's anyway, that's that's going a bit beyond uh, Prime Minister's questions. Uh, but thank you very much for joining me, Andy. That was uh, extremely uh, informative and interesting. And we hope people will join us next week. Thanks a lot.